Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney, the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing Thai property matters and real estate law. Uh, specifically, one issue that I see come up rather frequently with respect to clients that have questions, especially foreign clients who sort of don't understand how things work here in Thailand, uh, with respect to uh, property issues and long-term leases and rentals here, in, and not even all that long-term, even year-to-year -year rentals here in Thailand. <laughs> is the issue of key money. Um, strictly speaking, and, and, and I should say, as a practical matter, I only ever see this really come up with respect to commercial property, uh, especially commercial property uh, having to do with like um, food and beverage. So uh, bar and grill, restaurant type things. Uh, you see this issue come up with respect to landlords on those kind of facilities. And what are we talking about? Well, oftentimes, a landlord in Thailand will demand what's called key money, um, which is funds generally over and above and set apart uh, from the terms of the actual lease itself. Uh, this key money generally will be demanded in cash. Um, and basically the key money, um, it's basically needs to be paid or the lease won't be signed and the landlord will not lease the property. Um, as a practical matter, key money, as a legal matter, I guess I should say, um, key money, it's a nebulous thing, uh, in my opinion. In, in theory, key money could be perfectly legitimate, uh, but it's been my experience, just as an observer, a lot of the landlords that demand key money, they tend to demand it uh, over and above the terms of the lease. It tends to be demanded in cash. And therefore, it's presumed that they're not paying any tax on that key money. Um, as a, again, that's not uh, exactly legitimate when it comes to issues involving the revenue department. Uh, but frankly, that's kind of an issue for that landlord to deal with, not really the issue of the lessor or of the lessee, I should say. Uh, but that being said, it, it's also just it's sometimes it's just a given. Uh, and whether or not it's really fair, equitable or frankly, even legal, to demand this payment over and above the terms of the lease, uh, as a practical matter, it may, may re the, the main result of the situation is if key money isn't paid, the lease isn't going to be signed. Um, key money can be really problematic from the standpoint of taxes, especially corporate tax pertaining to a given um, venue, uh, because again, if it's, if it's all paid out in cash and the landlord isn't declaring it, how can one actually uh, write off that or how can a company actually write off those funds uh, as a legitimate business expense? As a practical matter, that's not possible. So the thing to take away from this video is, yeah, key money, it's kind of, if, if nothing else, it may be uh, a requisite evil, for lack of a better term, a necessary evil um, when doing business here in the kingdom. Uh, but that being said, uh, sometimes it's possible, it's been my experience that some landlords will go ahead and work uh, key money into some sort of structure within a lease, if nothing else, to provide um, a, a tax write-off to the given to the given business or the given individual. Um, but I've also seen landlords who can be very stubborn with respect to the issue of key money and not be willing to go ahead and provide um, any sort of uh, record of that transaction. So um, probably a good idea to seek legal professional advice on this issue. Um, understand the situation and you know in some cases where it's just an untenable set of circumstances maybe it's a good idea to just move on down the road and look for a landlord that isn't making such demands